Hello everyone and welcome to our new tutorial. Today we'll be trying to create the rainbow bridge from the Marvel movies. You know, the one that connects Asgard with the Bifrost. I find this bridge super cool and I think you can use the shader for many different things too, not just the bridge. Anyways, let's uh, jump right in. Here we are in an empty scene. All I have is just the essentials. URP settings and the sample scene that comes with the starting a new project. I'm going to import the rainbow texture real quick and if you do not have one of these, I will leave a link to download in the comment section below. Create a plane and scale it up on the set axis a little bit. Create a lit shader graph and call it rainbow bridge shader. Open it up and let's start nothing. Nothing? Ah, you know what I mean. Here we are in Shader Graft and I'm going to maximize it real quick and change the preview to a quad. Alright, I'm going to press space to search for my notes. This might not be visible on the video, my apologies in advance. Start by adding a sample texture 2D node and a property of texture 2D. Drag it here and connect them two together. Now we will not connect this to the color but rather the emission. Assign the texture to be our rainbow texture and now we can see it displayed in our preview window. Okay, we need to scroll this rainbow texture so add a time and multiply node then create a new property of type float called rainbow speed and plug it in here. I'll set the default speed to 0.5. Add a vector2 node to choose which way the rainbow will move and a tiling and offset to connect these two to the texture UV. You can make the rainbow move on the X and Y axis by simply swapping these connections. Plug it in and now we can see the rainbow move. Go back to the scene window to check it out and you can see it, it's all white. That is because we have to assign the texture to it. Okay, so far so good. Back in shader graph, we will go to the graph settings and change the surface to transparent. Check alpha clip and check two sided. Create a new simple noise node and a new property called alpha noise scale with a default value of 100. Plug it into the alpha and create another property called alpha clip threshold and plug this property into the alpha clip threshold. You can see now we have a noise cutting through a rainbow and once we stretch it, it will look as if the rainbow colors are not connected. I mean, you'll see what I mean in a second. Add a tiling and offset node. Connect it to the noise and create a new property of type vector2 for the tiling input name alpha stretch. If you set this value to 1 on the x axis, then you will see it fully stretched. This is exactly what we want. Add a multiply node and create a new property of type float called alpha speed so that the noise moves. Um, it is currently moving away too fast, so I will lower it to 0.1. Much better. Save the asset and let's see it on our scene window. Okay, it's starting to look pretty cool. We need to make the colors pop up a bit more though, so add a multiply node and connect the texture and noise together. Then plug it into a contrast node. Create a new property of type float called rainbow brightness and plug it into the contrast, then the contrast to the emission. Now we have to do the white borders. Select all these nodes, then move them down so we have some space. Add a UV node and split node, then connect them together. Add a multiply node so that we can get the border on one side and to get the other side we add a 1 minus node, then multiply them together. Now we have these black borders, but we actually need them to be white, not black. Add a remap node and connect this to. Swap these values to switch the colors and if you play around with this value you will see the borders get bigger and smaller. Add a vector2 node and create a new property of type float and plug them in here. You can also add more properties to play around with the borders a bit more if you like. 
before we combine the rainbow textures with the borders, we have to clamp the values just in case. Create a new property called border brightness and multiply this together. Lastly, we add these two together and plug it into the emission. Awesome, we're done here. Save the asset and let's go back to the scene view. Okay, it's looking pretty good as it is. I recommend you play around with the exposed values and try to find whatever fits your game best. I like to add an extra layer of white by duplicating the bridge and creating a new material with the brightness amount set to zero, then placing it underneath the main rainbow bridge. I think it looks pretty cool with this added layer. Here are some versions I have come up with just by playing around with these values. You could also change the texture so that there are more or less colors in your rainbows. Another cool thing you can do with this shader is create that bifrost effect. So let's do this real quick. Create a new capsule and I'm going to also add a sphere. This will act kind of like a planet, right? <laughs> then position this capsule in a way that when we scale it up, it goes into the planet. See? Now we have that bifrost effect thing. <laughs> this white is a bit too bright though, so I'm just going to remove it. And there you go. The rainbow bridge and bifrost in one shader. If this tutorial was useful for you, please like and subscribe. This is a very small channel, so every bit helps out a lot. All files are available to download in my Patreon as usual. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.